This is a segment concerned with the histology of the kidney for anatomy 2203. This particular section of kidney is from a unilobular kidney, I believe from a rat. Nonetheless, it's a section through the entire kidney, so the actual section is huge, and I'm now viewing it for you with the scanning objective. If there were a renal capsule, and we'll go down in a moment and look, it should be located here, a thin connective tissue, tough capsule that surrounds and limits the kidney itself. All of this material we're seeing here and being crossed by the arrow is the cortex of the kidney. Now if we move towards the center, one will notice all of a sudden this progression right about this boundary where all the tubules start becoming parallel to one another and form a straight, sort of straight tubules and then curve around to form the renal papillae, which is showing here. This is the tip of the renal papillae, so we're right on the very edge of it. All of this uh, material here is from the renal, renal papillae. And what we're seeing here is a space and this limiting wall, as now being traced by the arrow, is the wall of the minor calyx that uh, surrounds this renal papillae. So let's course over in this direction. We're going through the medulla of the kidney now. Remember, the renal papillae is actually the pyramidal tip of medullary tissue. So we're coursing back up towards the cortical region. All of a sudden we see tubules become much more convoluted right about at this boundary. And so this tells us immediately we're getting into the cortex. This field from about this juncture to here is all cortical tissue of the kidney. One can tell us immediately because the tubules become convoluted, that is they're running in every uh, direction, plus if one looks very carefully one can make out renal corpuscles. The renal corpuscles are found only in the cortex. And as we course around the uh, kidney, looking at the cortical tissue, one can, once you know what to look for, start seeing numerous renal corpuscles. And it is a characteristic of the cortical region. And if one just looks as we course around, one can see renal corpuscles scattered throughout this particular tissue. And then if we course towards the interior, very easily one can see the tubules line up in this area. So this is all medulla. And as the medulla courses down into a little tip, the renal papillae, which is shown here, medullary tissue forming this papillae, and then you can see the wall of the minor calyx surrounding it, shown here. Very briefly, this is the outer cortex, or tubules making up the outer cortex of the kidney. And what this demonstrates is the very thin limiting capsule of the kidney which has been stripped off uh, slightly. It's raised away so you can actually see it. And then you can see it where it is intact, superimposed upon the kidney itself, a very thin but very tough layer. It's very much uh, has the toughness of cellophane, so it's transparent, one can see through it but it is extraordinarily tough and the uh, closest thing I can relate it to for you it it's, has the transparency but the toughness of something like cell, uh, saran wrap or a cellophane type structure. So this is capsule. I'll show you another region of it a little further along that's not quite as disrupted. This is another section demonstrating the uh, renal capsule the renal capsule extends from about the tip of the arrow is now to this point. So you can see it's quite thin as it's seen at 
uh, sort of high magnification. And as we course along, one can see the appearance of fat cells, part of the renal fat, and the capsule still adhering to the tubules lying just beneath it. This is a high-powered look at a renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle consists of this entire structure as indicated and crossed by the pointer. The renal corpuscle has two parts, a Bowman's capsule, the parietal layer of which one can see here and is lined by a simple squamous epithelium, and the second part is a glomerulus, this tuft of capillaries as being crossed and indicated by the arrow. Now superimposed on the capillaries on their external surface is the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. So these capsular cells as shown here, these simple squamous ones, come over and then reflect on and overlie the glomerular capillaries. This is probably a uh, part of the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule, one of those cell types known as a podocyte, uh, shown at the very tip of the arrow. So, to repeat, a renal corpuscle consisting of a Bowman's capsule and an inner lying tuft of capillaries known as a glomerulus. This space is a true space and it's called the capsular space. The filtrate comes out of the glomerular capillaries, crosses through that podocytic layer making up the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule and enters this capsular space. After leaving or entering the capsular space, if we can go up to this additional renal corpuscle, after entering, uh, of course there's a little bit of an artifact right here unfortunately, after it enters the capsular space, the material will then enter into the proximal convoluted tubule which is shown here. This little space uh, should not be here. This should be tightly adherent as it is on this side over here and so as the material enters the capsular space it actually enters into the proximal tubule rather than lying on the external surface of it. And another example of a renal corpuscle showing you the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule here, that simple squamous epithelium, capsular space, and here you can see quite well the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. Right here are these three cells. These other nuclei are, I'm quite certain, are endothelial cells making up the glomerular capillaries. So we can see the visceral, or the, excuse me, the parietal layer and the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule right here, separated by the capsular space, and then the glomerular capillaries shown in the remainder of the field. That we can be relatively uh, comfortable in saying. This is an additional renal corpuscle that perhaps illustrates the continuity of the capsular space which is shown here with the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule which is right here and then this tubule will course and go uh, in this uh, direction here crosses over and then off in that way. Here, Let me move this over a little bit so we can see perhaps just a little bit better I can trace that for you. So to repeat, a renal corpuscle, the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule, probably a cell of the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. In between is this capsular space. This would be the glomerulus here with its, all the glomerular capillaries. So material passes through the glomerular uh, capillary wall beyond the podocytes, enters the capsular space, enters the lumen of the proximal tubule, which is shown going in this uh, direction like here and then coursing around up and then out of the field of view there. So that perhaps is, gives you a better example of that continuity of uh, provisional uh, or glomerular filtrate uh, leaving the renal corpuscle and entering the proximal convoluted tubule. 
This is a scanning electron micrograph of podocytes forming the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. This scanning electron micrograph is courtesy of P. Andrews of Georgetown University. This micrograph beautifully illustrates a glomerular capillary which runs in this direction, curves around and comes back and goes at that angle and completely investing and surrounding this underlying glomerular capillary one can see the pedicels and the secondary right in here and major foot processes of the podocytes as they wrap around the underlying capillaries. One here one can see the cell body of a podocyte. Remember it's the podocytes that make up this visceral layer. So this is where the nucleus would be. You can see its major arms extending out much like an octopus sitting on something. And as these major processes extend around they branch and give rise to secondary processes which then in turn give rise to these little pedicels, these little foot processes that give this herringbone appearance or these little tiny projections. The arrow is too big to really cover them uh, or to uh, touch them almost. In between the uh, pedicels, those little spaces, remember that's where the filtration slits are, a very small diameter. So materials being filtered pass through the underlying endothelium, go through that common basement membrane, and then between these little pedicels and these filtration slits, as they are sort of colored black here where the arrow is indicating, and then out into the capsular space. The arrow would be, for example, in that capsular space. <clears throat> so this is a beautiful illustration of podocytes which make up the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. This is a high power view of the uh, medullary region or the medulla just to illustrate some features that one can see. This tubule here is a collecting tubule lined by these very very distinct cells, sort of a columnar uh, type of cell, light staining with very distinct cell boundaries. Focus that a little bit for you. These vessels filled with erythrocytes or red blood cells lying in this area are the vasa recta and this tubule here lined by a very flattened simple squamous type of epithelium is a thin segment of the loop of Henle perhaps another collecting tubule here so a thin segment of the loop of Henle the vasa recta and then a collecting tubule shown uh, at where the pointer is, or at least the pointer is in the lumen of a collecting tubule. And finally, a high power view of the tip of the renal papillae, which is shown here at the pointer. You can see that it's made, there are several of these very large collecting tubules with more of a columnar type of epithelium. So this is the edge of the renal papillae, sort of a cuboidal or columnar type of epithelium. You then cross the space and the arrow is now pointing to the wall of the minor calyx. And the wa wall of the minor calyx will consist of a very thin transitional type of epithelium. That type of epithelium that lines the uh, excretory part of the urinary system, that is the minor and major calyces, the ureter and the urinary bladder. So this is a very thin form of transitional epithelium and then you can see the beginnings of a very thin smooth muscle wall. Characteristic of the tubes conducting uh, urine away from the kidney and to the urinary bladder and including the urinary bladder.